All right, well, welcome everyone. I figured after last night we could all use a little uh, mellow jazz to uh, get us going. So um, welcome to the last session of TC17. Thanks for joining me. And we'll go right to the title. So today we're going to talk about visualizing table calculations in Tableau. My name is Michael Moncavage. I'm a senior customer consultant with Tableau. I have been Tableau almost five years, so it'll be five years in November. And uh, I still remember the first time I tried Tableau, you know, over five years ago, downloaded it, installed it, and I was just, I couldn't believe uh, how easy it was to use compared to some of the other products I'd used before. So, you know, frankly, I kind of fell in love with it and uh, still in love today. So here's our agenda. Uh, We'll have a brief discussion of what are table calcs, just high level. Uh, I'll give you a brief history, and then we'll spend time talking about three sort of segments. One, quick table calcs. Two, uh, let's, we'll explore the compute using options. And then finally, spend some time with the editor. So what are table calculations? They're manipulations of data returned to Tableau by the underlying SQL. Um, and the way I always describe it to my customers is, you know, picture that data in a table returned to Tableau, and then you man Tableau manipulates that uh, all in a post-SQL manner. So there's no SQL being generated. Um, they're, they're very flexible. There's a lot you can do with table calcs, and at the same time, some of those many options and settings can make it challenging to understand. Certainly when I first started in Tableau, I can remember going into the editor and just trying every combination until I got something that I thought was what I wanted. Not necessarily because I knew exactly what to do, but you know, I just had to hunt and peck and try to figure it out. So I'm hoping today that we'll be able to, I'll be able to share some of the insights I gained putting this presentation together and it'll help you apply table calculations back at your offices and jobs. So, history. So I was getting ready for uh, this presentation. I asked around uh, Seattle and said, who should I talk to about table calcs? And everyone said, Ross Bunker. So Ross joined Tableau in March of 2005, and he was our 17th employee. He's still at Tableau, he's here this week. He's uh, the creator of table calculations and has really shepherded the function throughout uh, its evolution here at Tableau. That's his picture and his email, and he, if you want to hear more, I'm sure he'd love to hear from you. So I was surprised when I started, uh, when I talked to Ross, that quick table calculations actually came out in version 2. So the, uh, the concept dates way back to version 2. Um, modern sort of custom table calculations as we know them today arrived in version 6 and that had a two-part editor where um, first you saw this, the editor on the left and then you would pop up a second screen that showed the one here on the right. Um, in version 10 that was all condensed into a single editor which is over here in the bottom right. Okay, so we've uh, covered what are they and a little bit of history. So let's dive in and, uh, and take a look at them. I'm going to go ahead and escape out of here, open up another workbook. Here we go. OK. So quick table calcs. I'm going to use a very basic data set to, uh, to show you uh, what goes on with quick table calcs. And if we look at the underlying data here, it's really just an ID field running from 1 to 100, and then a count field that just runs from 1 to 10 and then repeats. So um, put that up, uh, double it, and we've got a couple of bar charts here. So we'll start and dive in and pick the first quick option, which is running total. And you'll see on the right that the uh, visualization adds things up with kind of a gentle wave pattern there, and you end up at the bottom at 550. Pretty straightforward. Difference. So difference, as we count from 1 to 10, 
uh, the increment is one, and I've you know, bumped up my font a bit so the ones are all kind of piled up on top of each other, but we move from two to three to four to five and get a difference of one and then drop back with a minus nine once we wrap, wrap around the corner and jump from 10 back to one. Percent difference, kind of an interesting pattern. So we move from one to two, 100% increase. Move from two to three, 50% increase, and you can see it gradually drops to 11.1% as we go from nine to 10, and then we get our big minus 90. Percent of total looks pretty much like the original. The only difference being we're, we're giving you the percent rather than the absolute, you know, absolute number. Rank, the rank, uh, you know, it's kind of an almost an inverse image, but in this case, we have ties. So there's uh, all the tens are tied for first place, and all the ones are tied for last place at 91. So in Tableau, you have an option. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna sort of jump ahead a bit, open the editor. Um, you can decide how you wanna handle those ties. So we default to what's called competition, but I could modify competition essentially makes everyone, uh, instead of 91st, tie for 91st, they're all tied for 100 or last place. So that there's some options for how you want to handle ties. Percentile, you know, buckets things into percentiles with the tens are all in the top percentile, the ones are down at the bottom. And then the last quick option in this case is moving average. So moving average, uh, I know, uh, essentially starts out with the default of adding the previous two values. So uh, here we have 10, the previous value is nine, and then eight, we add them up, divide by three, and you get nine. So that's the default. We open up the editor and look at the previous values, we can bump that number up. So we move the two, and as we increase it, you can see that the peak values smoothed out as we keep going up, and we get to a magic point where after a, ramp, a ramp up, we essentially have a flat 5.5 moving average using nine previous values. Now, in real life, uh, you probably wouldn't do this, but there's a pretty cool pattern that if I keep on going, you can see this little uh, effect of uh, this wave kind of propagates through the data set. So interesting, probably not, you probably would never do a previous 36 periods on a moving average, but it's kind of not interesting looking. So pretty basic stuff and, and I forgot to ask, so how many people in the audience have used uh, quick table calculations at, in their Tableau work? Okay, so I'd say, Pretty universal, yes. And, um, and most people use it the first time when you want to do a, a, a ranked sort. And I, a devs on stage showed us that pretty soon you won't have to use index or rank. You'll be able to hit a button and behind the covers that uh, sort will happen. But today, if you want it, you've got to crack open a uh, quick table count. So that's pretty typical. Next, we're going to switch gears and look at the whole concept of the compute using option. So I have another data set. This one's a little more complicated in that it's got uh, you know, some dimensions. So we have a, a fictional fruit store um, that sells 10 kinds of fruit and uh, it's selling by day. So starting store A has bananas on July 1st and they sold 10 and strangely enough, that ramps up in a very linear fashion up to the last day. Uh, that store sold 99 units of grapes, and then it actually repeats again. So both stores have the same profile in terms of how they're uh, selling, and that's you can visualize it this way. And again, I'm using this super simple data just so we can see what's going on when we uh, change things on the table count side. So again, I'm going to and. I should mention going forward, I'm going to just use, um, everything's gonna be done using running total. So, so you'll notice when I pick running total, and we can check 
can confirm that it starts out with table across. I, I turned off the auto adjust on the coloring just so that you could see the fact that the, obviously the values have gone, gotten much larger than I pinned it at 99. And if you drop down to the bottom right, you'll see the actual number is 531. You know, normally Tatbo would auto adjust, but I'm trying to portray some of the change in the magnitude of the figures behind. So, but we can jump, here's the color adjusted version of that same calculation. And what we can see is we're adding across the rows, summing up, starting with 10 and ending up here the first row at 450. And I actually can turn on the uh, text values as well so we can see what the specific values are. So that's table across. We'll jump back to the original. Actually, this, and let's uh, look at the next option. So the nice thing about the compute using is you can pick it without having to crack open the editor. So I can just run down, compute using, table down. And again, we see the change in the behavior. Um, this is the table down version with the color adjusted. And you can see the values increasing as we move down. And if I turn the text on for a moment, you know, we have a top peak value down the bottom of uh, 1890. So the next compute using option, table across then down. So in this, in this case, we're going to add up the first row drop down, continue adding with the second row. And as you can imagine, uh, you get a nice, you get a visual pattern here with increasing color. The, the, large, the numbers gets to be pretty big, so we're up at 9,810. And I can show you the text values. And then the sort of the flip of that concept is if we switch over from across then down to table down then across, we get a more columnar look color-wise. But in the end, we end up at the same total in the end. So it's, uh, but you can see the adding by columns and jumping to the next column and then continuing across. So pain, so it's interesting when I was talking to Ross when they were trying to decide what to call this feature, um, they talked about table calculations, window calculations, and in the end, it became table calculations. However, the concept of a window pane stuck. So we, we, can, we still have a concept in here of, of a window pane, and the pane, um, in this case, is the store. So while this is the whole, the whole table, it's broken into two uh, stores and two panes for each store, and in this case, you, you restart the calculation when you jump from pain to pain. So that's pain down. You can see the pattern repeats because the values are identical for each store. So across then down is very similar to the table across then down, although we just restart for each pane. So across each row, and then we keep adding, and then restart once we jump to the next pane. And then similarly, down and across is that columnar look, broken out by pane. And then we're down to the last handful here. So cell, in this case, is just the same value that we started with, because if you sum up the values of a cell, you just get whatever values in the cell. So um, not, not especially interesting in this case. And then we have date. And it turns out that, uh, that date is identical to table across. And you've probably noticed that if you've played around with the compute using, and, you know, and frequently, uh, you know, one of the options is identical. Um, in this case, table across or compute by date.
fruit. And it turns out that fruit is the same as pain down. Switch back and forth, they look the same. And then the last compute using option is store. And store, we only have two stores, the values are identical and we're summing up by store. So if we look at the, the first case it's just the values of that first store and the second case we add the two stores together um, which really just doubles the numbers. So compute using is, is a great way to go with, you know, you don't have to worry about the editor, but there's a big catch, which I guess I knew before going into this, uh, uh, putting the material together, but I hadn't really focused on the fact that, you know, where your dimensions are in your columns and rows um, determines how things are calculated. And if you do something like move store, you'll get, you won't necessarily get the same value that you had before, and in fact, let me turn on the text here, um, and back up. So we started out, oh, actually back up again, sorry. I'll put the text on now. So here we have um, table down, a peak value of 1890, and if I drag store up to columns, the calculation fundamentally changes and the, the max value is 945. So if you build something and then let people drag and drop, there's a chance that whatever you're calculating won't be correct. So obviously begs the question, how do you fix that? So to fix that, we will uh, turn to the table calc editor, but before doing that, I thought we'd take one last spin down the, all the various options here. So table across, table down, across then down, down then across, pane down, pane across then down, pain down and across, and then date, fruit, and store. Okay, let's switch gears and look at the table calc editor. So we're gonna use that same data set uh, that we used before, and I'll go ahead and start off with the Quick table calc, running total, and by default, it starts out with compute using table across, and let's open up the editor. So when you open the editor, uh, you'll notice that all of the compute using options that we just looked at are all lined up here, and then the specific dimension, op when you check that, it will pick the first dimension by default. And then if you go ahead and, and click through these options, th these are the equivalents of the, uh, the first compute using option, well, the last compute using options that we saw. Um, so in my quest for kind of understanding this in a, a deeper way, I found a, a blog by Andy Kreeble, which I like to, I took the liberty of uh, taking a screenshot of Andy's blog post, and he came up with a way to, in, an, in a sentence, describe what is being done uh, table calc wise when you start using that specific dimension option. And so the concept here, it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit, uh, well, it's a little odd, but the way you have to, to read it, but for each of the unchecked dimensions, so in this case for each category and subcategory, compute the fill in the blank for the table calc, so in this case percent of total, by the checked dimension. So using that approach, if I open the editor back up, so what we're gonna do is for each fruit and store, compute the running total by day of date. And I've, uh, I show you that here, and I've added the, the little the sentence per Andy's technique. And what we get is really, it's the table across. But the nice thing, the great thing about uh, doing it this way with 
specific dimensions is that this value will be calculated the same way no matter what I do in terms of the arrangement of the uh, dimensions. So let me turn on text and I can drag store up here and you know, the layout of the data changes but the values and the way they're calculated are the same and I can even do, I can do some crazy things, you know, it doesn't really matter what I do. Uh, the visualization may look strange, but if I you hover over, it's a little hard to get there, but the max value is still gonna be the same no matter what I do. So it gives you that comfort that, uh, that the calculation is always gonna be the same. So let's, so let's go back, open the editor again, and I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna uncheck day of date. I think that one of the great things about the new editor is that every time you change something, you see the impact immediately underlying it. In the old editor, you had to change it and save it to see it, and you'd go back and forth and back and forth. So you can open the editor and then uh, just click and play with it without having to close it. When you uncheck everything, it actually, there's, there's no table calc, so you're back to your default values. So I'm gonna check fruit, and then we go to, now what's interesting here is notice that fruit right now is in the middle of the pack here, and I'm gonna jump to the, uh, the fruit uh, with the color adjusted, so for each day of date and store, compute the running sum by fruit. So in this case, uh, we're adding down each column, and because we, you know we're also breaking it by store, so um, this actually turns out to be the pane down view uh, that we saw before. But what's interesting now, if I go back and I open that editor again, what you'll see is fruit has jumped up to the top of the list. You remember it was in the middle. Well, what it turns out that. Um, that order really doesn't matter when I'm just picking out one dimension. And for, so when Tableau opens back up, it just it puts fruit up top because um, it doesn't really matter. It didn't really matter that it was in the middle before. And then finally we have, if I check date, then we have for each, no, check store, I'm sorry. For each day of date and fruit, compute the running sum by store. So. So far, we haven't really uh, plowed any new ground with the table calc editor because these first three visualizations are the same as the uh, compute using options we had before. But now we're going to uh, we're going to step into an interesting world where we have more than one dimension selected. So now I'm going to go ahead and check fruit and day of date. And the sentence now reads, um, let's see, fruit. Okay. I think I might have, well, fruit and day of day. Ah. Okay, let, me, uh, let me jump back here. Make sure I get this straight. So then we're going to say for each store, compute the running total by fruit and day of date. So it's actually this one that I should have showed you. So here's the sentence. For each store, compute the running sum by fruit and day of date. So the interesting thing here is that now that I've picked two dimensions in the editor, there's a couple things that happen. One, so watch what happens when I un when I check day of date, suddenly there's a restarting option that now is available. If I have a single dimension, I don't have that option. So once I have two dimensions selected, I can choose to restart, and it'll restart by the top dimension here, so I can restart by fruit. And what that does is introduce the pane, restarting generates a pane in your table. So. The other thing that isn't very obvious, at least not to me, but it turns out that the order of these dimensions affects the way things are calculated. So um, if I drag fruit and pull it down below day of date, well, I tell you what, let's 
let's go over here where I've got the color adjusted and uh, we'll turn on the text and let me open it up here. And, and this is restarting, let's take that off. And I'm gonna drag day of date down below fruit. And you'll see that while the, the total is the same, uh, you know, the way, the pattern in which the values are calculated uh, changes with the order. So order is important um, when you start having more than one dimension checked. And then the other thing is for each option, um, so a day of date first, then fruit, I can restart by day of date. If I switch the order, you'll notice that it automatically clears the restart. And that's because now I can restart by fruit, but day of date no longer works. So essentially, with two dimensions selected here, there's four unique uh, possibilities for how I can set things up. So I can, I can have the order uh, switched, and then I can choose to restart or not restart. So there's four, the four options here, and then there's three pairs of, of two dimensions that I can pick. So that's a total of 12 different ways that I can select um, two dimensions. And it really all boils down to, you know, what do you, what do you, how do you want to uh, calculate these values? And again, this is so totally theoretical. I, I don't have a, a great real life use case to demonstrate when you might use one or the other. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's this, this complete flexibility with how you do your calculations that's going to let you probably get to where you need to be. Um, and it, once you understand the uh, power of the options that you can pick here. So, as you might guess, um, two, uh, the, picking two gives you 12 options. When we jump to the final uh, concept, which we've checked all three, the sentence now reads, uh, compute the running sum by fruit, by day of date, by store. You know, we no longer have the for each because we've checked all the dimensions. And when you open that editor up, you'll see we have all three checked. And furthermore, now under the restarting, there's, you can pick one of two dimensions to restart. And so I can shuffle the order, I can start or restart on two choices, and it turns out there's actually 18 different ways that I can pick these options. And each one is going to give me just a different um, display of the underlying data. So I, I started trying to calculate what the number would be if we had four uh, dimensions instead of three, and I, I got my head got sore after a while, but safe to say you, it's a lot more than uh, 33, which is the total number of possible ways you can select your dimensions and then order them and then potentially restart them. Um, and if you, some of my clients have had 10 dimensions down in a table calc, so you can imagine the number of combinations are, are vast. So, uh, so what I, that was really kind of my, my presentation. It's, uh, it turned out to be a little shorter than I expected, but um, I think the takeaways are um, when you use compute using, you should realize that the answer you're gonna get is completely dependent on where you put those dimensions. And if you move them around, you're gonna get different results. Uh, if you use specific dimensions, you, you can be comfortable that the calculation is going to be the same no matter what is done uh, with placing those dimensions. I think a lot of folks, when you uh, go into the editor, you don't necessarily realize you can move those check dimensions and change the order, and the order has an impact on how the value is calculated. And then, um, yeah, so the order has an impact, and then you can also change the order. So uh, that's my presentation. I know we finished up a bit early, but first of all, thank you for joining me on the last day of the conference. 
And um, I do have time. I'll probably just hang out up here and take some questions if you want to come up and ask me any questions. And also, from everyone at Tableau, thanks for uh, joining us here this week in Las Vegas. Take care.